Which part did you get to? Shut up. Okay. <laughs> so we did. <laughs> oh my god. Jesus. Stop it. I've Shush. got a COVID mask over there. I'm going to put one on you. <laughs> me? Yeah. Not me. <coughs> yeah. Well, right. You might better hear what you're saying. You won't laugh as much. Really? No. I'm going to have to resynchronize all these cameras. Right, quick, are we recording? Yeah. Happy days. So we're joined here by Kelly Harris of KDS and Lake Country, and he's going to be talking us through all of these pads. As you can see, there's a massive range. We've also got John Hall here from Clean and Shine, who just happens to sell a bunch of these pads. So and make you laugh. Yeah, God, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll let Kelly take over from here, and yeah, yeah. yeah. don't laugh. <laughs> I will laugh. So this is a small sample range from Lake Country Manufacturing. We're a global company, so we sell all around the world. So we probably in Europe or even more UK have a preference to what pads we want, mm -hmm. even or type of pads and even machine tools we use. But remember, Lake Country Manufacturing also sell to body shop, OEM, factories. So there's, this is a small sample. The, in the catalog I've got there, which can be found on their new website, there's a sort of chart at the back of the catalog that's on the website. There's a vast range of pads. Now, because of a large range of pads, it'd be very confusing for people that may not know exactly what they want. We've got an aggression chart range. Yeah. So it shows you how aggressive or unaggressive a pad is for a different mode. We've chosen a sample here of what I would say is preference for your audience mm -hmm. for a UK or Europe, going by what type of machines you would use yeah. or what they would use and what you would choose and probably it's what you would sell a larger majority of machines so if I said to you compared to an RODA machine on a rotary what would you roughly say your split is of how many rotaries you sell to dual action machines 90 10 to dual action okay so that doesn't surprise me because yeah. of how popular now and how great they are with the yeah. large orbit yeah. so what we've got is, say, this is a, quite a recent modern range compared to how long Lake Country have been going. Because we've been mm -hmm. making pads now, or well, the company's existed for just over 40 years, Lake Country Manufacturing. So I have a sort of legacy product uh -huh. here. Mm -hmm. And you said, how long ago do you think you remember I buying these or selling? I would say 2008, 2007. So this is a CCS pad, yep. literally known as just a CCS pad from years ago and so you would have stopped these a long time stopped ago? Stopped them a long time yeah. ago, 15 yeah. years ago. So these are very, very popular in America, North America, yeah. and they've been a great product for Lake Country manufacturer a long time. Now, I know, and you was discussing, that you find there's other ranges of pads that sell or more popular yeah. than this range. Now, obviously, that shows about geography of in the world and certain brands. Now, maybe we just don't know about CCS and what it does, you know, the technology mm -hmm. behind it and why we've got these dimples. And I can touch on that in a minute when we display the other pads. So, so Lake Country Manufacturer have been making pads for a long, long time. And that just shows they've actually been in the UK for quite a long time, oh, over yeah. a decade. Okay. Yeah. So when I'm talking to detailers or detailers ask me which pads, they're like, this is a new company. And I'm like, well, Lake Country Manufacturer have been around for just over 40 years, so it's not mm -hmm. a new company. <laughs> and actually, oh yeah, but they've never sold in the UK. <laughs> They have, <laughs> yeah. you have. So it's just been, I've come on board to help educate people what pads to use and actually say, we're around. Yeah. You know, this is a brand that's been around for a long time. So there's, we do sell a load of pads to OEM body shops and factories around the world. So now we're trying to educate the European market. So what we've got for an example here, what I would choose, if I was to move out of the way, moment, that's what we call an SDO pad. I assume you stock these? I think we stock those. And, and yeah. the HDO. Yeah, so HDO. SDO, what's it stand for? <laughs> Standard Duty Orbital Pad, so Orbit. Yeah. So that's a great pad for any sort of dual action machine. We're not too particularly bothered what size, but we say to prefer to put this on an 8mm and 12mm orbit. Okay. You can put this on the larger throw orbit, and it will work fine. The reason why I'm going to say we prefer to say that's a, a standard duty 
is what I think it works better myself on a shorter throw, smaller orbit pad. And the reason why that, we brought out HDO, heavy duty orbital pad, which is probably, maybe I'm gonna guess it, the one you sell more of, or? Yeah, yeah, yeah we sell more. Or you are actually we're, promoting, because that's, that's right. Yeah. So this is now exactly the same foam, mm -hmm. identical foam <clears throat> as the standard duty. But the heavy duty is we've put this interface sandwich plate in there. Yeah. So what you get is, and I'm sure John's gonna, because you've polished quite a lot in the early days of, you know, just go about 10 years ago, you was dabbling a lot with detailing, yeah. so was I, so was you. Yeah. And you now are more predominantly a shop, really, aren't you? You don't do detailing yeah, services not so much. much no. But do you remember, I'm sure you might have had some brands of pads, the middle would collapse yeah. and go. And what that was, his foam pads, what lots of manufacturers were making, were we were using that same pads and then putting them on a large throw orbit machine. So now you've got a more violent action, mm -hmm. a lot more throw. So you're generating more heat. And they never had a hole in the middle, so there's nowhere for the heat to evaporate or escape as such. So what you had was a concaving effect. Yeah. It was collapsing in the middle and the foam would disintegrate. And that's literally because if I could do it, the movement and the foam as it warms up is internally flexing. So internally the foam was getting hot, mm -hmm. it's disintegrating. So if you put a sandwich plate in there, so there's less actual movement of the foam, because it's yeah. a very rigid foam, there's less movement internally, you create less heat and there's less destruction. And obviously we've got the hole in there as well, which you know, is a new thing, uh -huh. maybe five years ago started happening, and that's quite normal. Obviously it also helps to put the plate in the center as uh -huh. a, as a yep. bonus. But there's, there's a twofold there, it's helped the cooling and location. So I would suggest you use the HDO, my preference would be on your higher 15 mil and 21 mil. Nothing stopping you putting it on an eight mil yeah. or 12 mil. It's just a heavier duty pad. It can take more violent action. Yep. Likewise, there's nothing wrong with you using this because of the centering hole in there mm -hmm. and the cooling effect. It's gonna work perfectly fine. Um, so there is two different pads, slight changes. Yeah. Now, I've tested these years ago before I even worked for Lake Country Manufacturing. And some of the reason why I become Lake Country Manufacturing is because of how good the pads yep. were. That fitted my business, my KDS Caltech business, and all my staff, it fitted perfectly because we preferred to detail and heavy cut with yeah. large throw orbital pads. Now, this legacy product, there's many different grades of pad. Mm -hmm. So that could be complicated because you've got five or six choices of different cuts. So the cut level change in increments were very yeah. small. So what they've done is simplified it and made free. Yeah. You've got your heavy cut, you sort of, that could be a one step. We That's something I'd probably be more used to that we Well you actually had a mention go a couple of weeks doing ago. Your car, wasn't it? <coughs> yeah. Yeah, we're doing your car that you had a go of that orange pad. Even though mm -hmm. it's not called a one step pad, because it's a medium cut pad, yeah. you can correct with that well and get a good finish cut as well. Yeah. So we've got heavy, medium, and finishing. So you've got the, the three pads there that are, are great all rounders really. So you can have standard or heavy. Now, we talked about the legacy with these CCS. Mm -hmm. yep. This is very new. It's pretty, well, you've not even seen them, have you? No. I'm and you it. don't, at this moment, this video, as we've recorded this, you don't actually stop them yet. No. No. So, this is quite a new thing. You wouldn't even know this, probably. No, Jay, the cameraman was talking to me right. yesterday, I think, about some of these. Yeah. But So, so I, I'm aware that they're new, and I'm sure you're gonna explain yeah. why. So. What it was is, you know, because we cater for the world, mm -hmm. it is going to be, they're pop, let's do it that way. These are very, very popular and doing well, I think, because of simplified free pads. Yep. And the jump between the blue and the orange is quite a jump for cut level. Okay. So, but when we talked about different orbits of speeds and different speed, pressure, orbit size and compound ranges, you can make adjustments to them anyway. Mm. If you add in, six pads, six compounds, it might get slightly confusing for people that are learning again. Yeah. So if you've got three and you know that's a heavy hitter, you know that's a medium cut and a finishing, mm -hmm. I think most of us that have even dabbled just a little bit of detail would understand which pad to pick up. Yeah. So this has become very popular, the SDO and HDO, amazingly popular as a foam pad. I think because it's slightly simpler. Mm. So we decided to put the CCS technology on the SDO and HDO, which are literally new, they was launched recently at SEMA. Yep. 
And the reason what the CCS is, is really it's a closed cell technology, basically. These pockets are not open cell. They've been formed and melted, so they're closed. So when you, however you put compound on there and run it across the pad, mm -hmm. the paint, we had this discussion the other day where do you spread it out, do you pat it? Yep. In the end, it all spreads out the same. You've now got pockets where the compound does not get absorbed into the face of the pad. Yep. So what you get is little dispensers that are gradually dispensing the compound. So some people might prefer that because you can pour the compound on and it gradually works its way. You know, the first pass, it doesn't. Yeah. After two or three passes, we stopped and looked at it and we created a video recently as a test video and it, you could see that literally it was left over in the pockets. So going back years ago, especially on your detailing world, mm. people were saying about putting blobs on, you did it on your own car. Mm. You was very methodical about how you placed <laughs> yep. the compound. Ultimately, if you spread a compound over it briefly and move it, it's going to gradually do that. Yeah. Now, some people might prefer that, some people might not. Mm. It doesn't mean we're dropping the HDO. HDO. Yeah. So the differences between these are slight, but we've got a very popular pad that's very popular in Europe. Mm -hmm. We have a very popular technology mm. that's in uh, North America. Yep. So where we have the option of, if you really like this pad, <laughs> And there was a preview video went out recently, I think, on Facebook showing this. And it was interesting because one of the comments went, one of my favourite pads has now got better. Yeah. So, and yeah. it was a person saying, they've used CCS before, but they like the HDO yeah. as well. Yeah. So it is um, small differences, but it, there is a, as a, an, a need for it. It just means John's going to have to put another space on his shelf. Yeah. <laughs> And now the pro is slightly tricky for you because it does open up a question when someone says which one, because yeah. the differences are slight. Mm. You know, it's, this is like, do you drive an Audi or do you drive a BMW? Yeah. You know, or do you have an Audi with S line or an Audi with you know a different line <coughs> of trim? Yeah. They're both very similar. It's a preference and style. And so sometimes I'd say you got to try it. Yeah. They literally, yeah. try it. Um, we will let you take some away to try. So you're more welcome to do a review in the future. Come on, John, you just try one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the, the good thing with, with three pads is it makes it a bit more For easy sure. to explain it yes. to a customer mm -hmm. yeah. because the, the biggest issue we have is with, with manufacturers who have got yes. this many pads because yeah. the customer's like, well, I want to do this to my car. Which one yeah. do I need? Mm -hmm. oh, well, is it here or is it here? And then you can also explain to them about using different compounds different grades of compounds because of what you just pads. said i was slightly cautious nervous about introducing the ccs to a simple system because it's essentially you've now got in total nine you're getting up more and more yeah. pads aren't you you yeah. get up nine pads when well actually 12 when you add that there when at the moment you've only got HDO, SDO, yeah. and if you've got heavy duty, you want to stick with them. But now you've got another option. But yeah. really true, they're going to cut. In the tests I'd done, I could see a very slight change in uniform how it performed. Mm. With all my knowledge and skill, I could compensate by how I apply the product to mimic it. Yeah. So there is a small gain to be had in that pad if you are a bit of an amateur and you don't understand how much to put on or how to spread the compound. Or you just don't care, you just want to put it on quickly and polish. <laughs> yeah. So it's, um, it's a small improvement mm -hmm. in performance, but there is a small gain yeah. to it. Um, one question I've got probably for our audience, obviously a lot of our guys watching are probably detailing on the driveway. So you mentioned these are probably better for longer throw and these are for yes. shorter. And yes. I know we've had this discussion over the last few days. There's so many variables in detailing, pain, age, Correct. conditions. Yeah. If somebody was to pick one kind of pad, forget the grade, would it be the HDO or SDO? So Not knowing what machine they may use it on. That's throwing always, a curveball in so there. Not, no, it's not really at all. If, because for the, ch I mean, I don't actually know the costs and I don't, and I ask John because he might not know the difference. <laughs> no, the difference between an SDO and HDO, obviously there's more manufacturing process in yeah. that than a HDO. Yeah. The fact this is a more robust, durable pad that's going to take more violent action, if you're going to buy one pad, I would always just say the HDO, because that will work better over every single pad of orbit size. Yeah. 
than an SDO would. The SDO, if you started putting on a 21 mm orbit and you really was a yeah. turn the speed up and push, you're asking slightly more from that. If, if there wasn't a difference, why would we have created it? Yeah. There is. You've got the small chance of damaging an SDO if you was really, really violent. Really heavy cut, hard paint, really leaning on it. Yeah. That's going to last longer. So if you're going to choose just one pad out of those two, I would say HD. It's a bit like, yeah, a bit like your analogy yesterday, then when the, how you drive. That one, if you go full throttle, you're going to damage it. This uh, one, you can pull it's back a little bit. It's going to wear quicker. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You're going to get less performance or it's going to wear out quicker. So that's actually false economy for durability. Yes. If you're not completely knowledgeable and can see what's going on when you're polishing mm. and it might be a hot sunny day it's a really hot day the foam's warming up the action you're doing is actually a violent quite hit aggressive yeah. action you've got more chance of that possibly overheating right because there's a, a thermal barrier between it yeah. so the idea is it doesn't that sandwich plate will stop the heat being transferred from mm -hmm. the machine up or the some of the pad down into the machine yeah so if i had to pick one because it does everything well yeah it'd be the hdl so moving this way then, I've got a few Mark fibers on wall and obviously this one looks familiar. Gone through a ton of these over the last few days. It, it was, I, you can see why, and this one, so. On that one. Yeah, so let me explain the difference. <laughs> yeah, you go They for are it. literally almost the same. Brand. I know what you're gonna say, I think. But. <laughs> so that's a HDO microfiber, yep. that's a microfiber. Now you can see, again, what we've done, because of different markets and different preferences, Lots of other brands of microfiber, that would be how their microfiber yeah. pad looks. It's got pretty much a square edge, no hole. Now, if you notice here that that one when I put back to back or even that way round, that one's got a, a slightly larger edge or more importantly, it's tapered. It's tapered, yep. So my preference, it has no change to the cut because it's the same blue foam, mm -hmm. the same microfiber material, same Velcro. So the only thing for me is the center hole is nice to line up Basically, so I just plonk it on and pretty much spot on every time. Yep. This taper, and now look, notice how you know, our foam pads, I've got taper. Mm -hmm. When you're going up to an edge and you have a, a plate or a backing plate and pad that's very similar size, you've got less safety net when the backing plate's doing its orbit. Yep. Having this tapered edge means there's a little bit of extra sticking out, which if I really want to get intricate on the edges, yeah. Maybe you should be using a rotary, but this is where I like this pad because some edge work that might be better for a rotary, I can sit there and let this stall a little bit, but because of that taper, it gets up to the edge closer. I, I prefer that tapered edge. It just gives me a larger sort of cutting edge and it gives me a little bit more visibility. Yeah. And essentially, the edge of the machine and backing plate is just slightly further away from the area I'm trying to polish. So it could be up around an indicator, under a door yeah. handle, so if I was going to choose out of them two just for what I prefer, it's got nothing to do with how much cut it gives you, because mm -hmm. it's exactly the same. Yeah. It would be that one, which is the HDO, so it's the heavy duty one. <coughs> the reason why we've done that is because it's put the sandwich plate, it becomes under the HDO, so it's familiar. Yeah. So they are essentially the, the same microfiber. Of course, you can see we make them in one inch, two inch, and three inch, and you had a go did you do any one inch, was it two inch polishing on your car? Two, two, yeah. So you've done two, so you'd use the two inch yeah, it was, yeah. pads like this. So um, the next one, you've been selling these for quite a while and there's been a few um, very skillful, very long term old school detailers, right. sort of infamous. They, yeah. they're, they're really well known guys yeah. that have got some really high end clients. Mm -hmm. And it was interesting, I was talking to you a long time ago and I started working for Lake Country Manufacturing, you went, purple foam wall pad. And mm -hmm. you didn't know why at the time. He was asking me like, why does someone, so and so and so, some really skillful guys, they absolutely swear by them. You were saying how great they are. Mm -hmm. And was, am I right, it was the short? Yeah, it was it's a short this, one, not the long one. Which is a really weird thing, so I'll come back to it. All wall pads are traditionally very long. Yeah. So. The, this is a purple foam wall pad. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, squeeze that, you can feel fo wall at the top, but mm -hmm. it's actually foam halfway down. I think I've seen this on one of your videos the other night. Um, so you've watched one of my videos? Uh, <laughs> I watched the whole Honda series, which I'll link below. <laughs> Everyone should watch that, but yeah, definitely feel that. So there's a foam in there, which makes that very unique. It gives a bit more bounce to it, because anyone that's used a wall pad, they mat and flat down mm. quite quick, and they get more aggressive but skippy bouncy yeah quite vicious because you haven't got the cushion there 
So with this, that would be ideally on a rotary, just because of the length of the fibers, because if yeah. you got on an orbit, it would lose most of its cut. It would still do something, but it loses a lot of its cut. Hence why we make the shorter ones. Mm -hmm. And this is, a, this is a small sample. I think there's, there's like about 10 different purple foam wall pads in sizes, thicknesses. This is not the entire range of thickness. We do do multiple thicknesses. Okay. This one I chose for you, John, because this is, I think, that you're... That's the one that sells for us. You sell really yeah. well. Now, yeah. this is really, really short hair, very short fiber. So that works brilliantly on a dual action machine or random auto polisher, mm. orbital polisher. Because there's hardly any movement, you can get a great cut with this. One thing, it will clog quicker than a long fiber. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna need to clean the pads more often. It's just gonna clog up, or you just have lots of pads, clean them at the end of your job. But one of the things with this, is I've got a feeling you might, and I might be wrong, John, did you even say to me that people, the person in particular saying how it can slightly level down orange peel or improve the finish? Mm. I think we, we've had a discussion yeah. because technically as solid that is and how aggressive that is, with a heavy cut compound, you almost turn this into sandpaper, yeah. a bit like we, you briefly talked about a denim pad to me and yeah. the theory yeah. behind them and they've almost died off. They was around for a while. So on <coughs> soft paint or very aggressive orange peel, I can see an improvement mm. using something this thin because mm. you, you've got a very rigid disc with a heavy cut. So I could use that with a rotary, I could use that with an orbital polisher. So I think it's a slightly specialist because the person in question you said that loves them, I get it because I know how great he is and I, can, and I believe he's using them well, you, I think as soon as you get them in, he's almost buying them. Yeah, he's buying them as soon as you get them in. Yeah. <laughs> he loves them. Yeah. So you're, with, the, with that pad there, you're going to get cut levels close to a rotary on a large throw orbit. Yeah. But you don't have the buffer lines. You just have a hazing, a micro yeah. hazing. So that is a very popular. You turned around and said to me, what are these? You know? <laughs> and, I, and I said, now we're sort of splitting the differences because that's a very similar technology, just slightly yeah. different blend let's call it a blend that one happens to have a hole you can have these with holes so again we do make a lot of pads <laughs> for different people if i was to touch on this one i actually quite like this one because what you've essentially got is the foam which is like you're having the mm -hmm. microfiber with a short but natural wall that's a, a sheepskin style lack natural wall yeah so that runs quite cool and i can get a great cut with that and i can now use it again on a rotary or da and, and I'm not sure you said you've got any of these. No, we don't look, we don't stop. So yeah, and what I'll do, I'll, I'll give you some to take away because mm. I really like that, but it's again, it's a bit specialist in that I can achieve with all of those, to be fair, that and that on a D, or that and that on a DA, it's gonna be similar, it's gonna be more aggressive. Yeah. That's why I say we've got a, a, an aggressive chart and on the website it's, it's designed so that you put in what level of cut you want what size pad you want, and the idea is it gives you options at the end. You even put in what machine you want, what level okay. of cut. And at the end, the idea is it's, it's a pre-selector, product selector. Mm. It filters down. So that's a new website that was re launched recently to help, and it will help you. Yeah. And nice. Hopefully, <laughs> people won't ask quite as many questions <laughs> as what we've got here. Yeah. Um, and then we've got just a few other pads there. So we've even got specialist pads, that red and blue, uh, red and black pad, they're actually from our forced range. Okay. So if the idea is this is for a gear driven DA. If you put this on a dual action, now there's a lot of foam there, this is gonna squash and flop around. So the idea is a gear driven's always rotating in one way. Yeah. So whatever movement, it stays there. If you happen to buy that pad and you wanted to put on just an orbital polisher, it's going to work fine. Yeah. But we're trying to design pads for certain machines and that's why this has a stronger radius. The mm -hmm. idea is we don't want that sharp more sharp edge of that pad because yeah. it's going to be digging around on a radius so yeah. or as it's rotating so we've put a radius on there to sort of stop that edge there but in right in the end um you stop them don't you i do stop these yeah, yeah. what are they <laughs> i was going to ask what are they john glass polishing pads rayon pads. Rayon. Right. rayon so for glass polishing so there's a there's an episode on the Lake Country, oh. Lake Country YouTube channel where I removed graffiti on a Porsche 911 window using these. And they are, so when we cleaned your windows on your car yep. with a polisher and pad, mm -hmm. microfiber, 
even though I call it glass polishing, as I told you last time, because I'm using a polisher and a polishing pan and polishing compound, I say let's polish your glass. Yeah. I'm polishing it to clean, yeah. not to remove scratches. So really I'm clean, yeah. but mechanically, these will remove scratches. And you can, I mean, they are. That's solid. Yeah, they are. You know. So a long, long time ago, it was a myth that if you use a heavy cut pad and a compound on glass, it's going to damage the glass. No. <laughs> But I wouldn't do is use one of these on paint, <laughs> no, unless you're no. trying to have a ring paint. I would not. <laughs> so we, we make even glass polishing pads as well, or, or actually remove a scratch. And then finally, probably not known, did you even know that the country manufacturer make backing plates? This is not all the backing plates here. I did. Did you? Yeah. I've yeah. flicked through the book a few times. Okay. Not, not just not here, yeah, right. before so, I've okay. so flicked through it. So we make the DA ones yeah. for the old Porter cable as well. Yeah. And we have them in two types. So. We've literally firm and soft. Yeah. You know, if you want to do it that way, we've got a more compliant one. Where I prefer, well, let me explain why. Let's help the audience because there was a reason for the two. Mm -hmm. If I was going to use a wall pad in a rotary, because obviously it's a rotary backing plate, and I wanted to get a bit of flex, so I'm changing the contact patch yep. so that it's larger, and I need to tip into a corner for a deep scratch, this will give me a flatter contact patch, but also give me more cushion, so yeah. a run smoother. If I really, really want to get intricate with a sharp edge, I'd actually be using that because there's no flex whatsoever. So if I tip the pad to do a heavy edge, that is really pinpoint sharp edge. Yeah. So ultimately, slightly, but I can prove this, I can alter the level of cut with any rotary pad, depending on how soft or firm the backing plate yeah. is. And I've got a very old backing plate that's gone so soft, it's almost nearly disintegrated. It's been used for years because I'm always pushing. I've kept that because that's even softer. Yeah. Because I can actually change the contact patch, but this is very geeky, very specialist, <laughs> of the, by the backing plate. So people prefer soft backing plates or firm black backing plates. So that brings us on to the pad washer, the mm -hmm. System 4 pad. Now, John, if you're a car Not geek, if you're a car geek, and most people that are probably detailing, most of your channel probably know or drive or aspire to have a, a Porsche GT3 RS or a Porsche GT3. We've had these discussions how they go overs. And in this mad climate over the last couple of years of cars that are being flipped for more money than what they are retail price, this is genuinely, you've had people, you've told me, on the first batch in your shop that have offered you, and you don't know this, I'm gonna do mean this. John's run me up and gone, I can make a fortune on these. When can I get some more? And I'm like, what? He went, people are coming in my shop and you've got one that's yours? Yeah. And they've offered you more yeah. than the asking retail price. <laughs> well, you used it yesterday. It's bloody good to be fair, it really is. <laughs> it works, it yeah. really, really works. Yeah. So, you could see why, once people use it, and what happened is in the demonstration last year, people used it and then you'd get instant orders. Uh, I did, yeah. And you had, yeah. I think you run out, didn't you? And then yeah. it was like begging, because you had one left and then yeah. you had, so bittersweet here, you've had so much interruption with running your business about this because <laughs> yeah. you can't get enough. You can't get them quick enough. You can't get them quick yeah. enough. So, and you can see why. And, and you've, we've obviously captured some footage of you cleaning the pad, yep. it was a notoriously difficult pad to clean, microfiber, fully saturated, yep. and then... So we've got plenty of footage, yep. I think over on the Clean and Shiny channel there'll be somewhere, John's got like 45 second clear, that's yep. all it took yep. to clean one of those pads. So it's what you didn't see crackers. yesterday when we was polishing Matt's car is we actually took this apart after yep. cleaning the mm -hmm. pad to demonstrate how it's captured the dirty water at the top and kept the, the clean water clean so there's no cross-contamination. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, it really works well. And if you're lucky, you can get these from Clean and Shiny. By the time this video comes out, <laughs> you should have plenty of uh, How, how much do these retail for, do you know? Oh, crikey. <laughs> here, this is almost, how much they retail yeah, for. <laughs> but, so, you asked me earlier that, and I get you saying that you've got LC Power Tools is obviously the division which is all to do with the machine yep. and tools, not pads. So yep. you, you assume this is an LC Power Tools item. Now, yep. some history. John would definitely know, I think, a 3000. Do you remember the 2000? You may I not. I remember that. I mean, I, they're up in the corner over there. I should have got them out. I've got 
System 2000, which is probably 13 years old. Right. And I've got a 3000. So this is actually a, a, a legacy product from yeah. late country manufacturing that's been updated. Right. Way before LC Power Tools come along on the market. Now, the reason why it's late country manufacturing, we make pads. This is a small amount of, you know, we make hundreds of pads to fit every type of machine, type of machine and style and orbit yes. for every type of culture. So that means we make pads for every brand. Yeah. That pad washer is going to clean any pad on any machine. There is, it's not bias. No. Yeah. Whereas we, if we were to put under the LCPT or Lake Country, or sorry, LC Power Tools, yep. it would then be solely seems like it's used just for the UDOS. UDOS yeah. yeah. But that doesn't mean it's a universal, you can, it's it's a universal yeah, pad correct. washer for any pad for are, any machine. So now yeah, that's a <laughs> universal pad that will fit any orbital polisher. Yeah. Yeah. So that is a universal pad washer that will clean any pad. And it doesn't have to be even our own pads. It will clean yeah. whatever pad you've got. So mm -hmm. that's why I believe you sold out of it straight away so yeah, quickly. Uh... And you've seen how it works. <laughs> yep. It's, it was my product of the year. Was it? Yeah, okay. it was my product of this year. And uh, that was in March or whenever it came out. <laughs> and, and, and it um, still is. <laughs> So you've got a new batch coming. We were just talking about they, they do sell that quick. And uh, am I right that I remember said you had a reserve list? Literally, it's like yeah. ride a Porsche. Yeah. There was a we reserve, had a reserve list. list going, when we please, got them. please, when you get one. And then oh, we, we found we found some suppliers around the UK and Ireland that had them. So we were sending people to those suppliers. So he's literally so rather them to other than shops. me selling them, we're sending them to other, sending them to other shops saying we know they've got them. So buy one there. So yeah, if you want one of these, make sure you we follow can't. Clean and Shiny on. <laughs> <laughs> they, they often post on the Clean and Shiny Instagram page new deliveries, so yeah, make sure you're following them. That's yeah. a plug for your channel there, and uh, yeah, there's get your order place right straight away. Here, isn't there? <laughs> Somewhere, <laughs> or in the description yeah. below. But yeah, speaking of which, then thanks very much to Kelly for explaining all of these pads, and thanks very much for John as well for joining us. Also, thanks very much to Lake Country for making all of this happen. So if you enjoy this video, as always, smash that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. And we'll see you next week.